It's like this creature was shooting, for lack of a better word, barbs or hooks into them, bruising them. They, the, the objects look like hooks or barbs, but when I think of scripture, they were like fiery darts. The little sheep had bruises on them and they had lumps in their skin. And I could see that this was such a picture of the church. We're bruised, we're beat up, we have wounds and we don't even know where the attack's coming from. We don't know how to deal with it. And I, I wanna say to you that what the scripture tells us is for us to stand. Sheep don't fight. Sheep don't look for trouble, sheep follow. And our strength is in following, our strength is in standing in the word of God. It's always a truth encounter. And I would tell you to remain free, stay out of heavenly realm warfare. Don't start anything. The Apostle Paul, when he was being taken to Rome, uh, you, you read about the shipwreck in Acts chapter 27. What a, what a horrible thing. What a trying time. Uh, the storm, Eurocliden, the Bible calls it, uh, was so vicious that Paul had even heard from an angel that the ship would be destroyed that all, everything on the ship would be destroyed. He said the lives will be saved, 276 people. But as I read that and read that and read that, I wondered, I wonder why Paul didn't just bind that storm and stop it. That's what preachers are preaching today, that we have authority in the heavenlies. I wonder why the angel came and gave Paul a message rather than the angel stopping the storm. The angel didn't have any problem getting to where Paul was, even though it was tossed on the sea for two weeks, 14 days, they were, they were in peril. Not one time did Paul command these demons to stop. What he did was receive strength from God's word and God's provision, and he stood in truth because the, the, the fulfillment of God's call on his life was being carried out. And while demons may hinder, they will never thwart the purposes of God. So our job is to stand, not to look for trouble, not to, not to fight against heavenly realm powers, way beyond our abilities and our rights to do so. But you know, the, the teaching today that, that you need to guard from is people will say, well, I'm an apostle. I have the right to do that or I'm a general, self-appointed, self-anointed. I'm a higher level Christian, so I can do that. It's just totally unscriptural and it's dangerous. And so I encourage you to know your realm of authority. Uh, I have authority over my house, my home, my dog, my kids, my stuff, but I don't have authority other places. Uh, it's not, people say we need to take back our communities. It's not my community. It's a community I live in. I can't d take back stuff that was never mine. I can't, I can't uh, take things that never belonged to me. I can take what uh, Satan steals from me. I can take that back in the name of Jesus because it's rightfully mine. But to venture outside of that, to march, to walk around beer joints and uh, it's just foolish. And I, uh, I have a, a friend uh, that lived in Youngstown, Ohio, and he, he told me, he's one of the most spiritual uh, men that I know. And he told me when he was growing in the ministry, he was pastoring at a church in Youngstown, Ohio. He said, every day on the way from my home to the church, I drove by a particular intersection that was notorious for bad accidents. Uh, it was in the news all the time, another accident at this intersection. A lot of violence uh, at that intersection. He says, as I drove through there, I thought I'd just bind those demons uh, that were causing the problems at that intersection. So much hurt, so much pain. And he said, I began to do that. 
And he said, I had to pull my car over to the side of the road. I got so sick at my stomach. Uh, I, I felt such oppression and such heaviness. And he said, as I pulled my car over to the side, he said, it was like I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I'm going to protect you this time, but don't ever do that again. And he, he, he immediately understood. He said he went back and did some research on uh, that particular intersection. He said there had been union and non-union violence there from a big factory on the corner. and People had been killed. Uh, there just a history of violence. And the demons had a right to that place because of what took place there before. But he didn't have authority to stop it just by driving by it and speaking it. And I, I just want you to understand so it can help you stay free. Don't venture outside of your realm of authority. He said, I understood immediately. My, my job as a Christian in that situation was to pray for people at that intersection, to pray for God's presence at that intersection, but not to try to stop uh, any rights that demons have. And I could, I could tell you stories for a long time about how this works. You know, in, in the book of Daniel, when he prayed and uh, for 21 days waited for an answer, he didn't know it, but there was warfare going on in the heavenlies concerning him and the revelation God was giving to him. And angels were fighting with the prince of Persia. There was warfare going on in the heavenlies. When Daniel got just a glimpse of it, with his earthly eyes, he got sick. He fell to his hands and knees and had no strength. Just from getting a glimpse of what's going on in the heavenlies, it's way out of our authority. God sent an angel. God told him your prayer was heard from the first time you prayed it. And uh, angels do intercede as a result of our prayers. Angels do get involved. Uh, thank God for angels. But what I want you to understand is that demons are fallen angels. The same creatures that come from the throne of God to minister to us as fallen angels still have some of that, that, uh, that same power. And, and think what they know that we don't know. You know, I, I, I have a bulldog and I, I, I've had a bulldog for uh, several years and one day I was looking down at, at from a, a chair, you know, I was sitting and looking down at my bulldog, looking up at me, and I'm just thinking, I'm so much smarter than that bulldog. I can, I can trick her, I can fool her anytime I want to. I'm just a higher creation. And that doesn't mean that she's not a good bulldog, she's one of the best, you know. But I'm a higher creation. And angels, and demons are a higher creation than we are. You'll never beat one in the flesh. You'll never beat one when you step out that side of your authority. You only open yourself up to uh, a warfare that you can't win. So I encourage you to walk in truth, to live in truth. Don't fear demons. I don't fear them. I don't think about them. I don't give them too much thought. You know, people ask me about what about haunted houses and what about ghosts and what is all of this? I don't give it a whole lot of thought, but it can't be anything else but demons. It's not, it's not the people of, uh, not the spirit of people who died. Uh, it's not hocus pocus. It can't be anything but demons. But I don't have authority to walk into a house and command demons to leave. Uh, you may, if it's your house, and it's your stuff, then you have the authority to do it. But it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a matter of magic or uh, somebody being, you know, a general or an apostle or, uh, you know, I, I, I can take whatever name I want. Um, I could be Apostle Don if I, if I want to take that name. But what, a, what a, a presumptuous and foolish thing to do. Um, I'm just Don. It's Christ in me that that is my victory and I stand in him. 
I don't, I don't have anything to offer except uh, the victory in Christ and uh, His shed blood and the truth of His Word. That's all we need to stand on is who we are in Christ. And uh, so knowing that and walking in that is, is great advantage. Uh, so I encourage you, just walk in the authority that you have. Your home, uh, your things, what's yours. Uh, you have that spiritual authority. But don't venture outside of it. Uh, it's like the next time you see the clouds darken and the thunder start to roll, um, thank God for your safety and for His protection. But why would you shake your fist at something that you don't have any control over? Uh, why, why, would you, why would we do that? Uh, not that demons cause storms. They're, they're a result of atmospheric conditions but they know how to do it. They know what conditions make, make things happen. And only Jesus stopped storms. Paul didn't, uh, nobody else did. And the scripture doesn't teach us anything like that to venture out and to try to um, stop what's going on in the heavenly realm can be a very dangerous thing. So know who you are, stand strong in Christ, but that's our job as believers is stand.